where is my hairbrush? Oh, where is my hairbrush? In this video, I'm going to discuss partial fraction expansion, particularly in the context of taking the inverse Laplace transform. The whole principle of partial fraction expansion is that I can take a function in the Laplace domain, let's call it h of s, which has a polynomial in s in the numerator and a polynomial in s in the denominator, and I can decompose this function into separate fractions which have Laplace transform pairs established on a table. The first case is the case in which I have distinct roots. In this case, the coefficients a, b, and so on can be found by doing the following. What I'm going to do to find a is I'm going to multiply the original fraction h of s by s minus p1, and then I'm going to set the value of s to be p1. By multiplying by s minus p1, I will cancel that out of the original fraction h of s. And then by setting s equal to p1, I'm choosing a point that would make h of s singular, or in other words, would put zero in the denominator. This will allow me to solve for my coefficient a. Likewise for b, I would take s minus p2 times h of s, and I would set the remaining values of s to be equal to p2. And this continues for all distinct roots which are found in h of s. To help understand this, what I'd like to do is take an example. In this example, h of s is going to be 2 over s plus 1 times s plus 2, and I want to find the inverse Laplace transform. To solve this, I should realize that h of s can be decomposed into a over s plus 1, plus b over s plus 2. Then, using the formulas I have established above, I'm going to solve for the values of a and b. a is going to be equal to s plus 1 multiplied by the original fraction h of s, which is 2 over s plus 1, s plus 2. And I'm going to evaluate this when I set s equal to negative 1. s plus 1 cancels with s plus 1. And so a is equal to 2 over minus 1 plus 2, which is just equal to 2. b is equal to s plus 2 multiplied by the original function function h of s evaluated when s equals to negative 2. s plus 2 cancels with s plus 2, and the result is that b is equal to 2 over minus 2 plus 1, which is equal to negative 2. Now the result of this partial fraction expansion is that h of s is equal to 2 over s plus 1 minus 2 over s plus 2. But I'm not done. I also need to take the inverse Laplace transform. To take the inverse Laplace transform, I'm going to use the following pair. I'm going to use the pair that 1 over s plus a inverse Laplace transforms to e to the negative a t u of t. Applying that to my specific problem, I get that h of t, which is the inverse Laplace transform of h of s, is equal to 2 e to the minus t minus 2 e to the minus 2 t, all multiplied by u of t, which means that this is true for time greater than or equal to zero. Let's move on to the next case, repeated roots. In the case of repeated roots, I have a function h of s which is equal to some numerator divided by s minus p1 squared. In other words, p1 has to be repeated twice in the solution. The decomposition of these repeated roots looks like this. It's equal to a over s minus p1 squared plus b over s minus p1. Now, finding a is actually quite easy. a is equal to s minus p1 quantity squared times h of s evaluated when s is equal to p1. P1. However, finding b is slightly more complicated. b is going to be equal to the derivative with respect to s of s minus p1 quantity squared multiplied by h of s. Once I've taken the derivative, then I will evaluate it at s equals to p1. Okay, to understand how we work with repeated roots, what we're going to do is another example. I'd like to find the inverse Laplace transform of h of s. h of s will be equal to 2 over s plus 1 multiplied by s plus 2 quantity squared. To solve this, I first notice that h of s can be decomposed into a over s plus 1 plus b over s plus 2 squared plus c over s plus 2. Let's start by finding a. a is found by taking s plus 1 multiplied by h of s and evaluating that at s equal to minus 1. s plus 1 cancels with s plus 1. And so I find that a is 2 divided by minus 1 plus 2 quantity squared. That turns out to be 2. b is found in a similar way. b is equal to s plus 2 quantity squared multiplied by h of s evaluated when s equals to minus 2. s plus 2 squared cancels with s plus 2 squared. 
And so I'm left with b being equal to 2 divided by minus 2 plus 1, which is equal to minus 2. Next up, I need to find c. I'm going to find c using the approach that was described earlier, in which I'm going to take the derivative with respect to s of s plus 2 quantity squared multiplied by f of s. And once I've taken that derivative, I'll plug in minus 2. Let's start by evaluating this derivative. I can cancel s plus 2 squared and s plus 2 squared. Then I just need to use the quotient rule to get the derivative. All right, so if I define 2 as n and d as s plus 1, then the quotient rule says that I'm going to take the following. n prime d minus n d prime over d squared. This gives me 0 minus 2 over s plus 1 squared, or in other words, negative 2 over s plus 1 squared. Now that I've taken this derivative, I can evaluate it at s equals to minus 2. When I do so, I get negative 2 over negative 2 plus 1 quantity squared, which is just equal to negative 2. Now we can summarize this decomposition as the following. h of s is equal to 2 over s plus 1 minus 2 over s plus 2 squared minus 2 over s plus 2. I'm going to use the following pairs to take the inverse Laplace transform. I'm going to use the same pair as the first example, which is 1 over s plus a transforms to e to the negative a t u of t. I'm also going to use the pair 1 over s plus a squared transforms to t e to the negative a t u of t. h of t is going to be equal to 2 e to the minus t minus 2 t e to the minus 2 t minus 2 e to the minus 2 t all multiplied by u of t. The third and final case that I want to cover is the case in which there are complex roots. But that's going to be the topic of another video. For now, this should get you started with real distinct roots and real repeated roots. Look for more videos soon. Thanks for watching.